Uh, example two, find the center vertices, foci, and asymptotes of the hyperbola given by the equations. Exact same question. This time we have a oh, general form instead of standard form. And again, don't make any decisions about up and down, left to right while it's in general form. Right now, x squared is positive, y squared is negative. It might switch when we start converting it to um, standard form. So let standard form happen first, then make your decisions off of that. And it's just like it was um, back with um, ellipses. We have to create standard form from this. There is one extra added little feature with hyperbola since there's a negative in front of 9 in front of y squared. It's going to create some sign issues, so you have to be careful. So my x's are here, my y's are here, and my constant is right there. I want to group the x's, group the y's, and move the constant to the other side. So I do that first, just basic moving things around. 4x squared minus 16x to the first. And we have minus 9y squared plus 54y is going to equal 29. Okay, don't worry about gapping anything right now. We'll do that in a second. But just get the x's together, get the y's together, get the constant on the other side. 29 became positive. Everything else stayed the sign, same sign it was because we didn't move anything else. Everything else stayed on the left. Now, what we did with the ellipses and what we're going to do with hyperbola is also, we want this to be 1x squared. We want that to be 1y squared. So we have to factor things out to make that happen, even if it makes it ugly. All right, we don't care if it's ugly as long as it's x squared. In this case, 16 divided by 4 is 4. 54 divided by 9 is 6. That's fine. It's great. Uh, if this was 4x squared minus uh, 1x and this was 9y squared plus 17y, that would be 1 fourth. That would be 17 ninths. Just let it happen. Okay. So, four parentheses. Now, I'm going to get x squared minus 4x, and I'm going to leave a gap there. So I'm allowing myself some space to complete the square and allowing myself some organizational freedom here when I'm doing my graph, my, my equation. I'm going to take a 9 out of this. Notice that I'm actually extracting a negative 9 out, so that's why I said be careful with the signs. Negative 9y squared divided by negative 9 makes positive 1y squared. Positive 54y divided by negative 9 makes negative 6y. Be careful, that it becomes a minus sign. That's a very commonly forgotten thing. So this is always going to be a minus. This, like, oh, it's not always. I would put, if whichever one's minus, I'd put second. So if this was negative 4x squared, 9y squared, I would put the y stuff here and the x stuff here. But there's going to be a minus sign here each time. So make sure that, that second object changes sign so that if I distribute it, negative 9, negative 6y make the positive 54y that started off there. And again, I'm going to leave myself some space there to allow for completing the square. That's going to equal all together 29. Now the complete the square step is what it was before. I'm going to take half of 4 and square it, that makes plus 4. I'm going to take half of 6 and square it, that makes plus 9. But in reality, I added 4 times 4, which is 16. And I added negative 9 times 9, which is negative 81. So be careful that it's always pluses when you're squaring this thing, right? But then this number times that number is what we truly added to that side. This number times that number is what we truly added to that side. And at this point, we're going to factor everything completely. So I'm going to get 4 parentheses squared, square root of x squared minus 4x plus 4, square root, square root sine. So it's going to be x minus 2. I've got minus 9 parentheses squared, square root sine, square root. So it's going to be y minus 3. And then over on this other side, if I add all this stuff up, that's 45 altogether. Minus 81 makes negative 36. Which now, it, it's almost standard form. At least I got my parentheses squared happening. Now I need to get that division. I need this to equal 1. This is the point where I want it to equal 1. So I divide by negative 36 to make that happen. And this gets back to my point about being careful about not making decisions until you get to standard form. Because when you divide by negative 36, all of a sudden this fraction is negative, this fraction is positive. So now y squared is positive. So my end result of all this stuff, we do have this number in front, right? So just like before, we're going to reciprocate. So 36 over 9, which happens to equal 4. If this was 7 36, now you get 36 sevenths. Okay, so you don't want any number in front of that squared object. But that's going to become a positive. This one's going to become a negative, so I'm going to swap the order on this step. So I'm going to put my y in front, y minus 3, the quantity squared, over, that's 36 ninths, which is 4. Now I'm subtracting, because opposite signs make a negative, and I'm going to have x minus 2, the quantity squared, on top, and reciprocate 36 fourths makes 9. And then over on this right side, 36 divided by 36 is 1, two negatives make a positive. So just like that, we get our standard form. 
take your time on that because that's where everything comes from. You get the correct standard form, you have the ability to get the right answer. Wrong standard form, you're not going to get the right answer. So just be careful with that. And then, of course, you group everything together like this, and you shrink it up. Oh, I missed that nine, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> All right, get it out of the way. All right, so standard form is successful there. So now we need to identify everything we need to identify from that. Step one, center. And again, it's HK. Be careful, X's aren't always in the front. So 2 comma 3 is HK here. So change the sign of the two numbers in the parentheses. I can see that A is equal to 3 and b is equal to 2, which makes c squared equal to 13, which means that c is equal to the square root of 13, which hey, that's 3.61. That looks familiar, right? Leave it to the book to give us two examples. Same thing. All right, maybe I should make up my own examples. All right, anyway. <laughs> A is 3, B is 2. We're going up and down because Y is squared, right? Positive. So we know we're going to be doing an up and down. So again, we're going to focus on B and C when we're graphing. All right? And um, vertices are something, foci are something, slopes of asymptotes are something. All right, so the center is 2, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go two spaces up and two spaces down to create vertices. Always from the center. I'm going to go 3.61 spaces up, which kind of goes off the page a little bit, that's okay. And 3.61 spaces down, 1, 2, 3.61 about here. This time, the um, so I can just identify those points real quick. So 2, 3, of course, so if I went up 2, that's 2, 5. Going down 2 is 2, 1. Going up 3.61 is 2, comma 6.61. Going down 3.61 is negative 0.61. And again, if you just 3 plus 2, 3 minus 2. 3 plus 3.61, 3 minus 3.61. So the, we're moving up and down. The y coordinate is changing. We're changing by these two numbers here. So if you're not sure exactly what the order pair is, just, just simple subtraction and addition. So this plus C, this minus C, this plus B, this minus B. If we were doing A instead of B, now we're moving left and right. This plus A, this minus A, this plus C, this minus C. So the, the Y coordinates stay the same. My asymptotes have slopes of plus or minus two thirds. There's some difference. It was three halves in the other one. At least they changed something up. All right. Plus or minus two-thirds, so again, from the center, I'm going to go up two spaces, right three. I'm going to go down two spaces, right three, to get my secondary points there. So my slant asymptotes. slant asymptotes. Try to get them somewhat symmetric. Ideal on a piece of graph if you can kind of, because yeah. it's centering them where you're at. But um, <clears throat> Asymptote, asymptote, vertex, vertex. So vertex, asymptote, I'm going to be near the asymptote and I'm going to go through the vertex like so. And the same thing here, like so. You have already decided it's an up and down, so that's where everything's happening. So. I've got my center, vertices, foci, asymptotes identified. And again, for the asymptotes, all I want is the slopes. And again, give me a good sketch based on all that criteria. 